Obama seems to be that adolescent child who's broken free of his advisors and is now acting out all on his own. That's the point I'm making. Well, that's the, the exact point that I'm stating in different ways, that he is out of control. The parental figure, in other words, his handlers or his advisors, right. are not present or else are doing Right. It. In other words, Rahm Emanuel being in Israel at a bar mitzvah, suddenly we see the teenage Obama popping out. I'm not going into the Arlington. I'm coming back to Washington for the Paul McCartney concert. It's more fun. That's what you're saying. That is not a behavior fitting a, uh, a president. Of course not, but you just stated it. His parental figure, surrogate figure, let's say this Mr. Emmanuel, is away in Israel, and he is behaving in an oppositional, arrogant, omnipotent fashion. And as I mm. say, stated earlier, Michael, I adore dogs. I have a rescue dog. And the one thing that struck me, and I said to a colleague who's also a dog lover, I mm. said, why is it that we haven't seen his dog much? I mean, right. whether you liked Bush or not, they were always bringing the Scotties on the plane. The yeah, yeah, Barney was always show. Well, the dogs are always a stooge anyway. They're just a, a front to show they're a normal family. But, but what are you saying? Because the dog upstages him, he doesn't want him around? Uh, that's a very possible. That's a very possible point. Also, I'm saying is, is that it shows me that when I did see him with the dog on the few occasions for the photo ops, it just seemed very stilted, more so than other presidents. Okay. Well, so they like, got a dog after they took over the White House to show that they're just you know Mr. and Mrs. America. They're Mr. and Mrs. Smith with a dog, you know, on the picket fence. They're just folk, but that's all BS. We know that. The fact of the matter is. Uh, the dog is a very important symbol, and I, uh, I was very impressed with Barney for a while, particularly when the Bush's handlers gave Barney a handicam to run around with at Christmas, underneath the Christmas tree. I thought that was one of the neatest things I've ever seen, which is the White House from the dog's point of view. I don't know who came up with that one. That was fabulous. But you never imagine that happening under uh, Obama, because that would be a threat to his own supremacy, is more or less what we're, what we're uh, suggesting here. What we're suggesting completely is, is that a narcissist must be in the spotlight. They must have total center of attention on them, and when they're not and they feel thwarted by it, they can lash out either in an oppositional manner, in an aggressive manner, in an angry manner, and that, I think, is what's going on here. Well, look at Bill Clinton. Bill Clinton was very similar. Bill Clinton was an adolescent president as well. He also had a, a tragic uh, childhood where his mother raised him. He had no father figure. Isn't that true? Correct. Now, this is a very interesting story that we're, you know, this storyline is a very intriguing one, and it doesn't apply solely to Bill Clinton and uh, Barack Obama. As you said, it applies to uh, min millions of people, tens of millions of people, perhaps on a planet of five or six billion people. But we're talking about it because it relates to a president whose judgment seems to be so clouded by his emotional reactions or his subconscious drives that we are seeing a country that's being driven over a cliff. And I don't have to be any more specific than to say the following. He inherits a trillion dollar deficit, runs it up to three trillion in a year and a half and says he cured the problem. He takes a nuclear arsenal and he says, I want to I want you to go ahead with the start treaty and I want to take apart the nuclear arsenal. I don't like war. I don't like the nukes. I trust Russia. I trust China. He says, I'm going to take apart NASA. We don't need NASA. I'm going to end the greatest space program the world has ever seen. I want that done because it's a waste of money. I'd rather have the money for social programs than for rockets. This is very dangerous. We're in very dangerous trouble. This is not a man running the deli. This is a man running America. And that's why we're talking about it. And his handler is away right now. And apparently uh, Axelrod has no, no real sway over him. He's not afraid of Axelrod. Isn't that true? I don't believe so. I think for some reason, uh, Mr. Emmanuel, for whatever reason, I don't know his personality type, certainly, but for whatever reason, there is some sort of parental edict that maybe comes down uh, between the two of them that affects Mr. Obama's thinking and judgment. Very interesting, very intriguing, uh, for sure. Before you go, what type of therapy do you practice, a Athena? Just but basically general. Just general. You, Athe like Athena is your stage name, correct? No, that's my real name. <laughs> so you actually are a Greek goddess? Well, yeah, Athena was the Greek goddess of wisdom, so I guess so. <laughs> Now, who's a narcissist? <laughs> my mother, and don't even get me started. <laughs> my big fat Greek wedding, huh? That was a documentary in my family. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Athena, I love this call. It made me happy. It's very rare that I get happy on this show. This is a hard a hard thing to do every day, but tell you, it's callers like you who make my life worth living. I want you to try to call the show regularly, really, and I want you to 
give up your practice just to listen to this program. <laughs> we'll do that only on one condition. That you What's give that? Teddy, a big hug for me. Oh, I love Teddy. Athena, thank you very much. I'll be right back. It's uh, 48 minutes after the hour. This is the Savage Nation. Savage.